Hey guys, what is up? Super late video, I know, uh, even later than normal. Um, in fact, the fights might even have started by the time this is uploaded. Uh, it's just been, it's been a busy week. That coupled with, um, even though I think tonight's card is good, there was no, I had no real leans or strong opinions one way or the other. Um, there are a few things I do want to talk about tonight's card on, um, in particular the co-main event and the main event. Um, so I do have some thoughts on those, uh, but before we dive into tonight's card, um, we can quickly recap last week's card, which was a great event for me. Um, I hit on all my bets, uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, because there are weeks where you just lose. Um, I hit on all my bets, but one uh which was brianna van buren um i had her parlayed with reboss who fights in two weeks uh and her reboss's line is just getting out of control um but brianna van buren she kind of she, you know, she kind of let me down um i thought she would wrestle her way to a 29 28 or or 30 27 um but uh props to tisha torres for uh or getting a, a badly needed win on her end uh, so aside from that I think I killed the rest of the night I had Jim Miller I told her you know my a plus 200 on Jim Miller um, I thought that was that was uh, that line was way too wide even though Roberts is a talented talented kid I think uh, you know you put plus 200 next to Jim Miller uh, unless he's fighting uh, you know a top five or top ten guy you know, you take it. Um, you know, there's also something to keep an eye out for for fighters that fight often, fight too often, uh, which I think maybe Roosevelt Roberts had finally been caught up with. Uh, you know, I think I'm not gonna look it up right now, but I believe that was like his third time fighting in a couple months span. So you know, constantly cutting weight, overtraining, that sort of thing is something to look out for. But I had Jim Miller there. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, I didn't actually bet this, but I picked Bilal Muhammad on the video to win by decision. Um, Bilal just finds ways to win a fight. Uh, you know, he can strike. Striking defense is a little suspect at times, but he can strike. He can wrestle when he needs to, which he needed to come the third round um, to secure the victory. Uh, so, yeah, Bilal got a good win there. Um, Rocky Pennington I picked her to win but uh, it was a stay away fight for sure uh, and then on to the, the co-main and the main there were my two biggest uh, bets of the night Josh Emmett I had Josh Emmett to win the fight um, I, I went against my initial lean of Shane Burgos uh, you know as as the fight got closer I just I couldn't trust Shane Burgos to keep his hands up and be able to take a shot from Josh Emmett. Even though he's the bigger, rangier fighter, Josh Emmett, he's like a little hornet in there, man. He's he can he's quick, can sting you, throws heat, uh, and it caught up with Shane Burgos. So big win for Josh Emmett. I mean, he's 16 and two. He, he he was this close to he's this close to being 17 and one um, when he, you know he lost to Jeremy Stevens uh, after knocking Jeremy Stevens down, or else. We'd be talking about Josh Emmett going against uh, Max Holloway or or Alexander Volkanovsky. I mean, he would be the number one contender possibly. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go with Josh Emmett next because um, he's a force to be reckoned with. He can wrestle. You don't see it very often, but he can wrestle. Um, and, uh, of course, he throws heat. And it, he seems to be able to take a punch okay. There was a lot of concern after uh, I think he had a broken orbital against Jeremy Stevens, um, but he seems to have fully recovered from that, uh, and um, he's getting a little older, so it would be, he, hopefully he gets a top top three guy next, um, and then maybe a title shot if he can get past that, um, and Shane Burgos, he'll be back, um, he just needs to work on his, you gotta keep your hands up, you know, Shane, um, anyway, um, so I had Josh Emmett in that, and he came through, uh, Main event, I didn't have a particular player. I, it, I, there was no way I was minus 400 to Curtis Blades. I thought that was disrespectful against uh, Volkov. Um, 
My main play though was uh, the over two and a half rounds. Um, you know, you have a guy like Curtis Blades who's going to look to wrestle exclusively. Um, and then you have a guy in Alexander Volkov whose takedown defense is suspect for sure. But uh, what I liked from this, from him, is he's very defensively responsible um, when somebody is in his guard. Uh, I mean, he's not, he, he, he doesn't really threaten with submissions, but he's excellent at um, being defensive. I mean, playing long in the guard, avoiding taking too much damage, avoiding submissions. Verdum couldn't submit him. Um, Volkov has a chin, uh, and he's able to get back to his feet. So, yeah, there was risk. You know, they're heavyweights. Smaller, the smaller octagon concerned me a little bit. Uh, but, you know, the over two and a half rounds at plus money was a no-brainer to me. Uh, I, I even was considering it initially at over, basically for the fight to go to decision at plus uh, 350. Um, there, was, there was value there too. But, you know, the over two and a half, you know, I, I would take that all day and I did. Uh, so... It was a great week last week. Um, apparently, the uh, if you watched last week's video, the bird shit was a very good sign. Uh, so maybe in a couple weeks, I'll, I'll ride back out to that same spot. Um, and if the bird shits, it's just time to go all in. Um, so, but we'll see. Uh, on to tonight's card. Um, again, there's I have no real strong opinions one way or another on any of these fights, to be quite honest. Um, I did like Aspen Ladd to defeat, um, Sarah McMahon. Um, you know, it's more of a fade, I think, on Sarah McMahon. I mean, the girl, you punch her in the face one time, you stuff a, a, a takedown or you get out of the first round and Sarah McMahon's gonna, gonna flop over and quit. Uh, it, she's gonna, she's gonna be a Sarah McMahon. She's gonna flop over and quit. Is this that? that that simple. Um, and Aspen Ladd, if she could survive that that first round against Sarah McMahon, I think she would have got the W. But uh, anyway, that fight's canceled, so neither here nor there. Um, but there's some good fights on there. On tonight's card, um, you got Luis Pena fighting uh, as a moderately sized favorite against Kama Worthy. Don't know if I agree with that line. Um, I, I think Pena... I think he wins, but... He can't. He's one of those guys that finds a way to lose. Um, so I like Luis Pena. Um, I hope he gets the W, but um, you can't trust him at that at that uh, line at all. Um, main card um, again, really no no lean one way or the other. Um, I would say Woodson wins. I'd probably take Lens, but uh, there's no, I haven't researched. Don't want to give you guys uh, any any lean one way or the other. But there's some fun fights, you know. Uh, I do want to talk about a couple things in the co-main event. Um, Mickey Gall and Mike Perry. Uh, I mean, Mike Perry is the deserving favorite for sure. Mike Perry's fought the stronger level of competition by far. Um even though he's come up short in those fights. Um, um, Ponzinibbio, he just, uh, Mike Perry just got knocked out by Geoff Neal. So actually that's, you know, we're going to see where Mike Perry's uh, chin's at. Not that Mickey Gall presents a, uh, much of a knockout threat. Um, it's still something to con take into consideration. Uh, my problem with this fight is Who's out there laying minus 325 on Mike Perry? I mean, unless he's fighting a complete scrub off the street, like, good luck to you at the taking Mike Perry at minus 325. Like, that's that's not a good bet, even if he wins. Um, Mickey Gall, he's young. He's progressing fight over fight. Um, I know he's, you know him as the guy that uh, beat CM Punk. Um so if he he could come in here and he could submit Mike Perry my concern with Mickey Gall is he doesn't have the best wrestling I don't know if he's going to be able to get the fight to the ground if he can get the fight to the ground uh, you, you got to like his chances but 
Mike Perry's a strong dude. Um, decent, pretty decent takedown defense. Um, and Mickey Gall has shown the gas out in fights. Um, but again, he's young. Um, you you would have to expect him to progress, fight fight out, fight over fight. Um, while Mike Perry is just kind of it's just kind of Mike Perry at this point. Um, who's a who's a 500 fighter? Uh, I don't know what his UFC record is, but it's got to be around 500. Um, again, much comp- much tougher competition than Mike than Mickey Gall. Um, personally, it's dog or pass. Um, I took a little lunch money poke at uh, Mickey Gall personally, just because Mike Perry, he he does find ways to lose fights. He, He's, is a 50 50 fighter you know you can't trust him you know he might shoot he might come in here and, and shoot on mickey gall like he did uh cowboy and, and get caught in a uh a guillotine from mickey gall or swept or you know just find a way to lose um that said i i, I like i said mike perry the deserving favorite i pick him to win in this fight but it's a it's dogger pass um because at the end of the day, you know Mike Perry is going to bring some serious heat. Um, uh, yeah, my, my pick is Mike Perry, but it's completely dog or pass. And uh, in this case, I think the plus 250, plus 275 on Mickey Gall, I think it's worth a, a small shot. Um, that said, he might get smoked. But uh, I also kind of like the over. I saw a lot of people talking about Mike Perry is going to smoke Mickey Gall inside of a minute or two. I, I don't necessarily agree with all that. Uh, I could see this fight going into the second or third round or maybe even decision. Um, but uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's a fun fight. It's an interesting fight to see. Um, so we will dive into the main event now. Uh, Dan Hangman Hooker and Dustin Poirier. It's kind of going back and forth on this a little bit. Uh, Dustin Poirier is your rightful favorite. I mean, he's coming off of a, a title shot. Um, you know, he's beaten he's beaten tough guys. Uh, I mean, you know, he finished Justin Gagey. Uh, you know, Dan Hooker. <sighs> it's a big fight for Dan Hooker because this is where he can prove that he belongs in the top five. He's ranked number five now, but. Um, you know, this is his fight to show that he could be ready for a, a number one contenders fight or a title shot soon. Um, again, I'm I'm gonna take Dustin Poirier, but uh, you know, plus two hundred on Dan Hooker, I think that's a decent bet to be quite honest. Uh, there was something I was that was uh, that I wanted to look up here. Um, guys coming off a loss to Khabib, so. Um, you had Conor McGregor. Um, he's one and zero after a loss to Khabib. Um, Conor McGregor knocked out Cowboy Cerrone. Okay, but before that, uh, Khabib beats Ally Akinta, and since then, Ally Akinta, after his loss to Khabib, is one and two. Um, he beat Kevin Lee, um, but then he lost uh, decisions to Donald Cerrone and Dan Hooker. So one and two from Ally Akinta, post loss to Khabib. Um, Edson Barbosa, after his loss to Khabib, he went uh, one and five. No, sorry, one and four since his loss to Khabib. Uh, argue, he arguably won, he beat Danny Gay arguably in his last fight, but uh, one and four since his loss to Khabib. Um, he did beat Dan Hooker, um, but he was just his kicks and his speed. I mean just lethal to a guy like Dan Hooker, especially in a bigger octagon. Um, but yeah, so Edson Barbosa, one and four. Um, let's go to Michael Johnson. You know, he has a losing record since Khabib. Uh, Michael Johnson, two wins, five losses. Since his uh, loss to Khabib, he's two and five. And one of those wins was against Artem Lobov. The goat Artur Lobov that is, um, and then you, you start going back, you know, four or five years ago. Daryl Horcher one and two, 
since his last two Khabib. So um, I don't know if that's a trend. I mean, it's showing as a trend um, where guys, after they lose to Khabib, um, I don't know if it's physically or in that mental space. They, they just maybe aren't the same fighter. But, um, you know, it's something to, to take at least a small note of. Um, that said, I know Dustin Poirier, he, he, he trains hard. He, uh, I expect him to have 100% effort. Um, and he's the rightful favorite, but in my opinion, this fight is also a dog or pass. Uh, I, just like the Mickey Gall, I, I have a little bit of just lunch money on Dan Hooker, plus 180, plus 190. Um, you know, I think he, uh, he has a chance to really, he might, he might knock out, knock out Dustin Poirier. There's a, there's a legit chance that he does, I think, um, especially with a smaller ring. But, uh, that said guys, nothing, nothing really confident. Um, should be a fun fight card. Um, mostly just a, a all around pass on my end, uh. Two weeks from now, we have UFC 251, I believe it is, or is it 252? I don't know. It's, uh, let's see, two, yeah, 251. Great card, three title fights, um, with, with a couple underdogs, I think, have a, a good chance to win. I mean, you have the Rose Namunas, Jessica Andrade rematch. Uh, I mean, the card is, is pretty stacked. Hopefully, it stays intact and we don't lose anything. Um, I'm going to try and put out my picks for that card a lot sooner and not the day of um so we'll see but uh it's fun chatting with you guys leave a comment like subscribe um i'm gonna try and also do another video maybe the next week just talking just boxing and and ufc in general mike tyson you know that sort of thing but uh um good light good luck to you guys if you're taking any bets tonight i uh, hope you guys crush it and um stay safe out there later